Hey there, welcome to first class on trading futures. I'm really stoked that you're here and there's a lot of information to cover and let's just jump right into it. And throughout the course, just remember that if you have any questions at all, make sure to send Kristen and I an email at contact at pricelevel.trading.com or send us a, a message on Facebook and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. All right, we'll see you in the first lesson. All right, welcome to the very first lesson on futures trading. I'm Brian Weber and one of the co the co-founders at Price Level Trading. And we are going to just dive right in to what our futures got, cover some of the markets, some of the products we trade, time frames and much more. So this is going to be a 10 slide presentation, actually less than that. And it's just jam packed of information. All everything is just what you need to know. Nothing more. There's no fluff. This is what we know at press level trading between Kristen and I, we know this works. We like to keep things simple. And I feel like that's just the best way to approach trading in, in the first place anyways. So welcome and let's just dive right into it. So of course, going to have to have a disclaimer here um, that most all of this information that I'll be presenting to you is for educational purposes and doesn't constitute investment advice and the rest of our disclaimer is there for your information. All right, so trading is 80% mental, possibly more, and the other 20% is strategy. And if you know, ever heard of the 80-20 rule, it's called the Pareto Principle. And if you haven't, you should read the four hour work week and don't be fooled by other gurus i'm using air quotes on that that are pushing their holy grail strategies and their signals that are claiming that they are making all this money without actually telling you the real truth that trading being successful at trading has to do with your psychology who you are as a person and who you have to become in order to be successful and to set you guys up for success at the beginning of this course, just want to cover some characteristics that will make you successful as a trader, regardless of the strategies that you use. And the first one is accepting risk with reward. And this is really important in trading because we have, in order to make money trading, we have to put risk on, meaning we have to put our, our money to work in the market. So there's possibility of, all right, go, I'm going to lead into number two here that you could lose the money, but you can treat that losing that loss as a learning experience to learn what you need to do better or um, what you could do differently. And if you just followed your plan to the T, then it's okay. You know, you're going to have losses when you follow your plan. It's all part of the process. As long as you're confident and keep being consistent and you'll be, be okay. And the third one is having self-control and being self-aware, understanding yourself, being able to look from the outside in and realizing what's going on as you start trading, you'll experience emotions and behaviors that you'd never experienced before because all the subconscious stuff that's ever happened, that's in the back of your mind that you've happened, that you've learned growing up and throughout your life will come to the forefront when you put real money on the line and start trading in a dynamic environment. So it's important to recognize things that are helpful to you and things that can potentially sabotage you and learn to stop the latter of those two in order to you know, be successful at trading. And number four, these three are very important. I touched on it a little bit already. Uh, being consistent, having patience with a PAY because that's how we get paid in trading and discipline in order to follow the same plan day in and day out that works specifically for you and no one else. And like I mentioned already, trading is about discovering who you are, what plan is going to work for you, what you're comfortable with and confident with, and you can execute day in and day out, no matter what the market's doing, no matter if you lose, if you lose on a trade or not, do the same thing day in and out and watch the results work for themselves in the long term, because this is a marathon, not a sprint. And number five, being genuinely happy with your life, free of any major stress. And you'll see any successful trader out there, they are just a happy person. You know, there's, they don't really have anything to complain about. They're just always seeing the brighter side of things. And you'll even hear a lot of traders talk about using meditation to calm their minds. And if you've ever just sat down and closed your eyes 
and focused on what was actually happening in your mind, you'll realize all these thoughts that are running through your mind. And so these are happening subconsciously and we don't realize it till we take a second and actually are aware and recognize it. So meditation is one of those things that Chris and I will push because it will help you calm those thoughts and be able to focus on one, one or two things and trading is very important. So you can laser in on the trade that you're taking as opposed to like letting other effects, other uh, thoughts in the background affect your trading. And then number six is a major one. Be calm, relax, should put have fun as well. And most importantly, be decisive when you see a trade, hit the button and, and be confident and make some money. Moving on to like what futures are. So we like to talk about getting in tune with the marketplace because as a trader, like when you first start doing this, you really don't really have any idea of what's going on. But that's where screen time and consistency comes into play and like like consistently learning about all the, the terms of the market, what's actually going on, what economic events do what, you know, how do how do those economic events affect the market, you know, being able to read sentiment, stuff like that. Um, but basically, since we're only trading futures and this is a futures trading course, futures pretty much a type of derivative. You don't know what a derivative is. It's just something that derives its value from some other underlying asset. Like, uh, for example, the ES futures track the movement of the S&P 500 index. And that's actually one of the futures that we trade here at Price Level Trading. Uh, futures contract is similar to an options contract as it is an agreement between two parties to buy or sell an asset at a specified future date and price. Prices for each contract do fluctuate throughout the trading session in response to economic events and market activity. So the stock market is just a general market between buyers and sellers, and that's what makes the price fluctuate. And volatility, which means like the price, the price is moving in bigger swings, like the range is widening, is typically due to economic events, like I mentioned, Trump sending a tweet or, you know, something big happening in the market or people just are buying because the Fed is cutting interest rates. But I'll cover a little bit more in detail about that stuff on the next few slides. So there are a bunch of different future markets by category, but we only focus on a handful of them, mainly the equity index, which consists of the E-mini S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, the Dow and the Russell 2000. We'll also sometimes look at crude oil, which is an energy market. Next up, let's talk about contract month name expiration. So all futures contracts have specific expiration dates. And for equity futures, what we'll be trading, roll over, meaning they sw we switch the next front month contract every three months. And it's important to note that we don't hold through expi expiration. And let me give you an example why uh, on crude oil. So if you hold through expiration on the contract that you're trading, you hold, meaning you held a position overnight and you didn't close it out in, before the, the market actually closed, you would be required, if you were long, you would be required to take delivery of the physical crude oil, or if you're short, you'd have to deliver that physical crude oil inventory to someone that owns the other end of that contract. So giving you an example, if crude closes at $63 a barrel, that's going to require $63,000 per contract in capital in order to cover that position. And there's no way around that with, with uh, the futures market, you will be required to fulfill that contract. And that's the reason why we do not hold through expiration. We trade futures, we only buy and sell throughout the day. But if you do swing trade, don't recommend doing that. But if you do, be aware of how many, when your expiration on the contract is, so you don't get stuck in a situation like this. And next up, just wanna cover briefly some details uh, for closer expirations, meaning the front month. So that would be like less, smaller amount of days till expiration have the greatest trading volume. And then farther expirations have a higher value due to the time value that's there. And to be able to recognize, you'll see this in your brokers uh, and your amp, uh, not your, uh, your data feeds actually, when you want to put in a symbol for a quote or to trade it itself, the format for 
doing this with futures will be the symbol, the month, which is a, a letter code. You'll see in the table on the right. And then the last two digits of the year for the contract. So to give you an example, on ES, the S&P 500 futures, since, like I mentioned already, we only trade every three months, we trade the, or we'll trade the contracts in, in March, September, June, and December. So examples for the syntax of that would be ESH19, ESM19, ESU19, ESZ19, which is the current contract. So as we approach December, about a week before that, expir that, that contract expires, which is always the third Friday of the month, in that month, we will roll over to the, the March contract, which is H. It would be H20 this time. Next up, I want to talk about the power of leveraged because futures contracts are extremely leveraged. And if you don't know what that means, in a nutshell, leverage allows you to substantially increase your buying power. So let me give you an example of what that means. So say the S&P 500 futures are trading at 3,000, which right now they're a little bit higher than that. But I'm going to use this even number just for an example. So the initial margin deposit at TD Ameritrade is $6,600 per contract. So what that mean is, means is you need at least that much money in your account to trade one contract at TD Ameritrade. The value of the contract is calculated by taking the value of one point for ES, which is 50 bucks, times it by the index price that it's at, which is 3,000, and that equals $150,000. So the total value, of the S&P 500 future one contract is $150,000. So by trading futures, you can actually participate for only 4.4% of the total cost of that contract because you only need $6,600 to trade, to have control of $150,000 worth of an, that instrument. But with AMP, is, which is the broker that we use here at Price Level Trading, their day trading margin is only $400. You only need $400 to trade $150,000 worth of uh, an instrument, which is great for small accounts. If you don't have a lot of money, you can you can make a decent amount of money if you're if you're smart and you manage your risk properly. But it's also a double-edged sword, which is why we always re recommend. Can't stress this enough that you must use hard stops when you're trading futures. You guys work too hard to save your money and then put it to work in the market. So you can make as much money as you want and as quick as you want, but you, it also works the other way if you're not using stops and protecting your capital, which we'll have another course that covers that in more details. Next, let's talk about the geopolitical landscape. So what does that mean? The market has a rhythm to how it moves intraday and long-term. And how do, how do we determine that? So there are US economic events that can move the market and examples of those are the non-farm unemployment and employment numbers. We have ISM manufacturing, our GDP, retail sales, consumer sentiment data, and there's probably more than that, but these are the typical data points that can move the market and set up opportunities for us. And you can take a macro and a micro perspective and get the overall sentiment of the market. Is the economy doing better? Is the economy flattening? Is it starting to worsen? Stuff like that. And also current events, for example, we have US and China trade negotiations going on that have been whipsawing the market for the past, over the past year. And lately it's been getting more bullish because there's been a lot of optimism that there might be a phase one deal between China and the USA. And then we also, on top of that, we have Federal Reserve cutting interest rates. Jerome Powell is the chair uh, of the Fed has been cutting interest rates, which is also a bullish thing for the market, which has been driving up equity prices to new all-time highs. And then recently in the energy market, we had Saudi Arabia oil field tax. There was a drone that bombed their oil fields, which caused a spike in oil. And of course, you cannot forget about the Trump tweets that consistently are happening on a daily basis, sometimes a few times a day, and that can drastically cause a spike in the futures prices 
and which is also goes back to the previous slide that I was talking about with using hard stops, you must do that because the market could could spike up or down intraday based on a tweet like that or just any general event that comes in a news headline. What happens in other countries economies matter too, like in China, the same type of economic data that we could look at in China, Japan, Germany, uh, London. And if you're trading futures, I'll cover this in another slide, but their those market times with their opening closes also will be really important to know. So you can set up opportunities around that if it fits your schedule. In today's world, we you absolutely need a live news squawk when you're day trading so you can get this information as soon as it comes out so you can know how to take advantage of it so you're not blindsided and we actually Kristen and I use a free news squawk which is called financial juice it's the same if not better than trade the news and it doesn't cost a penny so we actually in our live trading room will have that running in the background so you'll be able to hear the news when we hear it as well. The global market opens, closes in economic data. Uh, so this is important because the next slide that I have is actually going to show you how to take advantage of these time frames where multiple markets are open and closing. The New York Stock Exchange, that's the United States, opens. This is all in Eastern Standard Time. So 9.30 we open, 4 p.m. we close. That's the cash close. It's different than the futures. The Shanghai, this is China, opens at 8.30 p.m., closes at 3 a.m. And for China and Japan, the opens are more important than the closes. But actually, if you notice, they all kind of coincide with each other. Like the Asian markets close when London is opening. And this is where the opportunities present themselves. Um, so Tokyo or Japan market is opening up at 9 p.m., and London's opening up at 3 a.m., closes at 11.30 a.m. And this London timeframe really correlates well with good trade setups in the U.S. markets for futures. Talking about futures, because those are all above, all above are the cash opens and closes, U.S. futures actually trade five days per week, 22 and a half hours per day. So starting Sunday night, 6 p.m., the futures open in the U.S., trade all the way to 4.15 p.m., stop for 15 minutes to 4.30, then 4.30 to 5 p.m., they'll trade again for 30 more minutes. But we don't trade in that that uh, short amount of time. And then from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., the market is completely closed and then reopens again at 6 p.m. for the futures. So for economic data, to keep up to date with what events are coming up for the day and the week, you can use forexfactory.com and they are really great for just overlaying, mapping out like what events are going on throughout the day. They even have when certain people from the Fed or Trump are speaking. So you know when to sit on your hands and not take any trades because it, the market might whipsaw. Forex Factory is a really handy, handy tool to add to your toolbox. So this is one of my favorite slides. And we're going to talk about day trading time frames, and this is all going to be an Eastern Standard Time for simplicity's sake. The reason why I want to show this slide is first, futures trade, like I already mentioned, they trade almost 24 hours a day. And the beauty of trading is that we can adjust our schedule to fit with trading based on you know when we're available. So it's not stressful for us. We can we can just make trading work for us, you know, because there's a lot of opportunity throughout the throughout a trading day to take advantage of. If you're if you're not, for example, not available during the U.S. Open, you could trade you could trade the London Open or the Asian Market Opens. But let's dive into more detail when those are. So first up, we have 6 p.m. Let's just say this is Sunday night to. Sunday night to Monday morning, or Monday afternoon, excuse me. So first we have six at 6 p.m. Sunday night, we have the U.S. futures that open. And then unless the market's really moving, the first trade opportunity is going to be when the Asian markets open. So we have China opening at 8.30 p.m. and then Japan opening at 9 p.m. And this is the first real opportunity, I would say, that you could look for a trade setup for either a reversal or a continuation in trend. 
based on what the Asian markets are doing. Markets are doing. And then next up, we have the London Open, which is one of my favorite time frames to trade if, uh, if I'm up. But that's usually at midnight my time since I am on Pacific Standard Time. But this guy right here, you'll see at 3 a.m., typically there's a reversal in, in trend. You can see that we're making lower highs and lower lows. But then as soon as the London market open, we break this resistance right here and then trade back up to these highs right here. And that presents a nice opportunity, you know, two, three, four risk reward ratio right there. This is a common pattern that you'll see all the time around this London market open. So if it's a time frame that you'll be able to trade, I highly recommend it. And then let's take a look at the next time frame, which will be US market open, which is at 9:30 a.m. And even before that, at 8:30 a.m., that's typically when high impact economic news data are released. So there's a potential for an opportunity, say if there's like GDP being released or employment, unemployment numbers being released at 8.30 a.m. There will usually be a trade setup based on that if you know how to read the data, if it was a hit or miss, if it was a, uh, or a beat or a miss, if it was bullish or bearish, you can take a trade usually based on that. And those trades usually don't last very long because the price moves very quick. So you gotta be very uh, on top of it. We don't, have, we don't really recommend trading news events but because that's more of an advanced strategy. But as you get more skilled, that's something you could look at. And then after that, we have the 9.30 a.m. New York Stock Exchange open. So this is when the U.S. markets open. Typically, this is when influx of volume happens and there's a lot of people in the world participating here. And you'll see a spike in volume. We usually don't trade the first five, 10 minutes of the market open because the the price likes to, it's very volatile. It swings back and forth, up and down. And there's no real direction unless the trend is strong and there's a clear break of resistance or support. Like you can see here on this, this break right here, broke above there and we held it as support twice or three times. So you have to be patient at the, the US market open, otherwise you'll get chopped up and you'll hit your risk limit. Your, your stop loss for the day. And that's the things that we, we don't want to see. So after that, between, uh, after the US market opens, there's, they'll present some trading opportunities in around 10, 10 a.m. to 10.30. There's usually a pullback, which is this guy right here. That'll present a nice retest of support. You could see there was a nice, you could have made some money on that bounce there. And then usually the trend will usually either reverse or pick up steam around the, the next time frame, which I have, which is the London close, which is at 1130 AM. And you can see that as soon as that the London market closed, we took off and broke this previous high right here. And we made a new high and that presented a really nice opportunity for if you're looking to go bullish here, which you should have because it was holding this as support. The next time frame that I recommend trading, but this is also another advanced time frame to trade. Don't recommend it right away, but you can trade within an hour leading up to the close of the of the U.S. market, which will be at 4 p.m. That's when the the cash close will be but futures will still be trading for another 15 minutes. So you can see, usually it's like 15 minutes to 10 minutes for that close. So at 3.45 to 3.50 PM, there will be potentially bigger move that happens. If you just draw a line, horizontal line, all the way across here, you can see we dipped really quick down to that level and shot up about six points. This is about $300 worth of trade within 10 minutes. With a, with a really good risk reward. And it takes practice, takes screen time to be able to trade the close because there's a saying that is very true that the pros trade the close. But that's something that I highly recommend once you get practice and are comfortable with doing so. And then next up, 
at uh, 6 p.m. or reopen at 6 p.m. on that Monday. So just to highlight again, these are the three time frames that I would recommend. The Asian market opens, the London open, the US market open, and then the US market close. Know your instruments. So I want to cover like the, the futures contracts that we'll be trading and all the details about them, like how much value per tick and uh, the symbols and all that. So we only focus on typically just, we really only trade, Kristen and I, is just NQ, the NASDAQ futures, but sometimes we'll trade ES and very rarely we'll trade crude oil. But these are the three that we like to trade. I'll cover S&P 500 futures first, which is just ES. And that is the go-to for most people because it's the most liquidity, meaning like it has the most volume over a million contracts typically a day. So you can get in and out with no problem. But then again, you can do that for almost every other future. But yes, price action can be pretty choppy sometimes. And there can be a lack of movement at times. And you can be stuck in a trade for like 30 minutes or more. And the price isn't really doing much. It, it will either help your patience or make you just, you know, lose your patience. <laughs> so, but we act, the reason why Kristen and I prefer to trade NQ over ES, uh, it, Besides that, it consists of all the major tech companies like Apple, Amazon, Google, and all those people. Uh, there's better risk reward that we've seen and smoother price action than ES. It, it's the way that it moves. It's just, I don't want to say easier, but the levels are, you can map them out and they're more clear. It respects the pullbacks more, the fibs. And you can end up getting like four to one, five to one risk reward ratios where ES it's half that most of the time. There's just more opportunity in the NASDAQ futures. Every time I see big moves happen in the market, NQ is moving like $2,000 or $1,500 worth of opportunity and ES is moving like a thousand or so. So that also comes with, uh, if you don't know how to identify levels, it can be, it's not, doesn't really matter at that point, but once you do, you'll see what we're talking about here. And then the last one will be light sweet crude oil, which is just CL, that's the symbol. And it's very similar to NASDAQ and risk reward. And it's very technical, meaning that it really respects its price levels, it respects Fibonacci retracements. Uh, market structure is very well, is, is very good. It's easy to identify on crude oil, but it is not for the average beginner trader. That's something that you ease into and move up after a few years. But you can also take a swing at it with, I think they're going to be having micro futures for CL come out soon, which will be nice. Those three future instruments, ES, NQ, and CL, the exchanges for the equity futures is on the CME, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and energy market for CL is COMEX. So the tick size is something that can confuse a lot of people, but all it is is the minimum price movement that the underlying futures contract can do. So for ES and NQ, it's a quarter of a point, 0.25. And for CL, it's 10 cents. And the value of a tick for ES is $12.50. Value of a tick for NQ is five bucks. And for both of those, there are four ticks in a point. And CL, the minimum tick value is $10. And here's an example for NQ say that the NASDAQ futures move from 7,500 to 7,501. That would be four ticks of movement, which is also one point because four ticks in one point, and that's a total value of $20 per contract that you have. And I provided a link here just in case you're curious to see all the other futures. Sometimes we'll look at gold, uh, but it's very rare. But just want to include the main ones that we'll be trading in the trading room. And that link's there just for your information. All right, lastly, let's talk about the tax advantages of futures trading. So futures follow something that's called the 60-40 rule. So what does that mean? That means 40% of your gains are taxed at the short-term capital gains rate of 35%, and the other 60% of your gains are taxed at long-term capital gains rate of 15%. So if you do the math on that, it comes out to an even 23% on all gains. 
So it's not like the federal tax brackets if you're at an if you're an employee at a job, as you make more money as a futures trader, you don't pay more taxes. Well, you technically do, but your tax percentages that you're paying to the government do not increase. It stays at 23% no matter what. So let's give you, I'm gonna give you an example just so you understand of how much more beneficial futures trading can be over trading stocks or options. So let's say you make $100,000 in profits for the year. So as a stock trader, you have to pay $35,000 in taxes because of the 35% short-term capital gains rate, which is gonna leave you with only $65,000 for the year. It's not that much compared to like how much you actually made, but it is still a good sum of money. As a futures trader, you pay $23,000 in taxes and you're left with $77,000 for the year. So that's an extra $12,000 or $1,000 per month you get to keep that you don't have to pay Uncle Sam at the end of the year if you trade futures. And there are also other ways to lower the taxes you pay as a futures trader or just a trader in general. And you can actually trade under an LLC or other tax advantaged business structures, but I'm not gonna go into detail in this video about that. But when you're ready, you can consult with your account accountant to figure out what's best for you. So this concludes lesson one of the futures trading course. Congrats on completing the first lesson on trading futures. I know it was a lot of information to take in and digest, but that's why we record these videos so you can go back at any time and review what we're discussing. And don't forget, you have a Kristen and I as a resource to ask us your questions anytime you want. So next up, we're going to talk about capital defense management, aka risk management. And we'll see you in the next video.